Hey guys, hope you're all doing very well. In today's video, we're not going to talk about the higher time frames, talking about the whole Elliott Wave count from the Genesis that we spoke about in previous videos. We're going to focus more on this current price action that we're seeing here. I see a very good move into at least 35k, at which point we'll have to reassess and determine can this market suddenly flip 35k, in which case you've got to accept the argument that we could be on for all-time highs however it is a very big horizontal level of resistance for reasons i'll mention in this video but i see at present we're in a strong bull run there's a lot of euphoria in the crypto space right now and certainly i see at least near short-term upside as i say i run into 35k looks very reasonable so what i want to talk about is why i've set that target how i'm what where my level of invalidation is and why Am I really looking out for the, that level in particular? So if you're new to the channel, you'll see that I have a general focus. I really like to use pitchforks, but I don't use them alone. I like to combine them with Elliott Wave in particular because they help with choosing my pivot points, but also for fine tuning my targets. And I will also throw in order block levels as well. You'll see these horizontal monthly, weekly levels uh, every so often, which just help me fine tune my targets. And as you can see, this monthly level, which we'll talk about in a moment, is around 35k. All right. So first of all, this move up here on Bitcoin, let's talk about it. So the, the count that I've got here, just to explain it, and then we'll talk about how it can be considered in alternative ways. So I've got it as a, a three-wave move up to here. That's an ABC, okay? Now, I know there's a lot of people thinking, hang on, why is this not an impulse? Why is this not a one, two, three, four, five up to here, okay? So we'll go into that. So uh, as I say, I'm looking at it as an ABC, followed by, on a lower degree, an ABC correction, expanding flat and then we've got another abc to the upside so altogether it's making a wxy so we've got the first abc making the w the smaller abc uh, expanded flat making the x wave and then we've got another three legs up to make an abc y wave as such so that's the kind of play that i'm looking at so the reason i don't really have it as an impulse is i don't believe that that's a five wave move into there followed by a wave two here in my opinion this correction well, although it can be, it's not broken any rules, it's very short-lived. It's not really proportional relative to the move up. And that's why I don't really buy it as an impulse and a correction, a wave one and two. And there's even more reason why I don't buy it as a wave one and two, because that, that was just, this is the wave three and this is the wave four. And the, the wave three is pretty short, as you can see, relative to the wave one. Wave four um has actually overlapped with wave one so actually it's breaking all the rules so that's the reason that i don't have this as a five wave count up to here as a wave one okay as a result you've got to look at it in alternative ways and as i say i've got a imp impulse correction impulse to make an abc you then got this complex abc expanded flat and then we've got a further three waves up uh, to make this a b c scenario to follow so that's the way i'm looking at it now i was using a different pitchfork initially when we were considering an alternative count and i will just show you that in a moment so as you can see with this pitchfork it's a shift pitchfork we're on the log scale first pivot is at the bottom second pivot is at the end of the abc so that's your first wave complete and then your third wave goes at the end of the second wave. Oh, sorry, your third pivot goes at the end of the second wave, which is that X wave finish right there. Okay, so that's how we draw a pitchfork. You can see the lines are being held very, very nicely. Upper warning line resistance, uh, median line support. We then push through the upper median line, used it as a bit of support. And now I'm looking for a target in and around the upper warning line once more. Where do we look for that? upper warning line to get hit well that's where i'll look for confluence and as i say i like to use these horizontal levels of significance and in particular that 35k level stands out so let's just talk about the other pitchfork that i was following so is this one here so it price action was actually following this very very nicely okay and there is an argument again that you could have had a wave one two three four five okay so actually five waves that would then suggest because of the fact that we broke this lower warning line it means that we've finished a wave that would be the wave one up to there one two three four five count but again the wave two although again it's not breaking rules 
is a little bit short-lived in my opinion. Okay, it came down to the 0.236 Fib retracement. If we go from low to high, we've come down to the 0.236 and in fact just gone a little bit beneath it. But it's a very shallow wave two. It's not your classic wave two. Typically a wave two will be very deep and quite short-lived. Okay, instead it's looking like a, a long duration wave four kind of play out. So it's a little bit irregular, I would say. So that's why I'm not too keen on that idea. However, of course, if we if we flip 35k and we suddenly turn bullish, then certainly that's the count that you would need to look at. Wave one, two, and then with three, four, five, etc. Okay. However, as I say, I'm not leaning towards that right now. The, the way the, the kind of sentiment is playing out, that's looking more like just a correction of this leg here to make it like an A, B, C coming up. So that's what I'm leaning towards. How does that change my approach? It doesn't at all. I'm still long into 35K. It just means that 35K, instead of holding on to a long position at that point, which you generally would do if you were seeing this as a wave three. So if you were seeing this as a wave one, two, three, four, five, etc., to go higher, then why would you take profit at 35K? All right. I'm t I would be taking profit at 35K because I'm concerned about that count that one, two, three, four, five count. As I say, I see it as a more of a corrective scenario. Reason being is we've broken this pitchfork here and I don't think that is a um, satisfactory wave two. I think it fits in a lot better with this other pitchfork that I'm using where we've ho we're still holding it and respecting it very, very nicely uh, where we've got the ABC scenario. Uh, again, a smaller ABC to make our second wave and that gives us our pivots, our pitchfork and we're targeting the upper warning line. So in terms of how you trade, you know, even if it does push through 35K, there's still plenty of opportunity to gain, still long into 35K. If it flips 35K rather than getting rejected, excellent, that's an opportunity to get back in and we just reassess the count instead of, and then you would change your pitchfork. First pivot would be here, second here, third would be here and you'd be following a wave one, two, three, four, five, etc. But it's the wave one and two that sets out your pitchfork pivots. And usually you would use an original pitchfork because likely we're following a steep gradient original pitchfork. Um, so yeah, I will be releasing a pitchfork tutorial very soon. So keep an eye out for that one where we'll go into details about how these pitchforks can be used because it is complex. It is hard to put it all together in a, uh, in a short video. So there will be a full tutorial on that, very similar to the Elliott Wave tutorial that I did uh, a few years back. So that explains why I'm using this particular pitchfork. Uh, I'm explaining the count to you. And so really now, I want to focus in on the horizontal levels. So I've marked out the 35k level. So what I will generally do is I'll zoom out now and I'll go on the monthly time frame. Let's just bring it all into picture here. So on the monthly, very nice level right here. So I look for my order blocks. You can mark out the top as well if you wanted, but we're well away from 58k. I'm not going to plot that on right now. This is the level of interest, 35k, very interesting horizontal level. So that's it here on the monthly. You can put extra levels here and here, for example, also important levels here and here also to levels to be considered. But this is the realistic one because I see it as very realistically finding confluence with the upper warning line of my pitchfork. So that's what I'm generally trying to do. I'm not putting on every single level. OK, I'm starting with the highest time frame because they generally have more weight to them and I'm looking at not just any level, but it's got to have confluence with the other indicators. As I say, I'm a big follower of pitchforks. That is the general thing that's following uh, that I think is going to be following this market. Um, so it's the confluence of the upper warning line that I'm looking out for. So that level is of in particular interest right there at 35K. Then we can come down to the weekly and there are several weekly levels to look at. But this is why I mentioned that it's the pitchfork that is the most important factor for me okay so you can see you could put a level here there's a weekly order block right here let's plot that on so that comes in at 32.289k yeah you could put that one on you could, there's even a lower level right here so we could bring that to that point there that's just beneath 32k at 31.777k so, and you can see that's just overhead resistance. We're coming into that very, very soon. Already it's been tested as resistance here. 
could be testing it as resistance again but i've got the opinion we're going to flip that i don't think it's going to offer too much resistance reason being as i say i'd be surprised for us to suddenly find resistance in the pitchfork at this point i think there's a very good opportunity especially when this high has only just been taken out i think we're going to take it out with a bit more a bit more of a substantial move and i think as i say a good move into 35k that looks like a very nice confluence there with a very important horizontal horizontal level of 35k so that's why i've not marked on this level but of course be mindful if you're intraday trading certainly you would have that level on your chart okay um so then let's just so that's the kind of target i'm looking out for as i say if we can push through that and even if we if we break this upper warning line to the upside then that certainly begs the question as to whether this uh pitchfork is the one to follow in which case i would switch to the pitchfork that follows the first pivot second and third following a wave one two three four five but for now that looks more irregular to me so i'm following this until we see our price reacts at 35k all right so now if we just zoom in we can just have a look at a bit of the lower time frame price action so here we are on the daily and there is an important daily level i marked out just for seeing where we might come down to here so that's just looking at this bit of price action if we go in and zoom in on this so i marked out the top of this range here so this range here that we've had the top of it here this is our daily order block uh so i've marked out i think we could potentially retrace this level before pushing on higher you can see it's been a firm level of resistance for a long time and yeah i think we might just retest that point before continuing the move higher so if we come down on the four hourly we can see let's in fact go down to the hourly so it still looks like it wants to come down a bit further here no real sign of pushing higher just yet so i think this level is a very important level to watch you can see how many times it's been tested here um so i would be very surprised if we didn't come down to this point and this is at around this is at 30.7k okay so i would that's the kind of this we're looking on the lower time frames here uh so yeah that's the kind of level that i think we can find hopefully find a bit of support at okay uh, if we zoom out there are a couple of other smaller pitchforks to consider let me just bring those on so we've got this one which is just following this lower time frame price action as you can see first second third pivots i'm not too sure i'd hold on to this pitchfork because i'm not too sure the correction oh no to be honest i probably would yeah it looks like the correction could easily have finished here three waves moves three wave move down into the upper median line of our major pitchfork and and then we've gone higher yes uh so yeah a little bit of resistance being found here probably because of the upper warning line not yet broken out retracing it's looking corrective which is good so we're correct we've got a uh, consolidation beneath resistance being the upper warning line which is great that's what we want to see so then we look for support at the daily order block waiting for that breakout above the upper warning line so that's the opportunity that i'm looking out for um so yeah that's that pitchfork and then we have another one that we can consider just looking at this lower time frame bit of price action let's go on the 15 minute just to t take a good look at this and let's make it a bit more clear so we're just following this so i'm looking for potentially you know this is in a perfect world textbook scenario which rarely occurs but you've got the lower median line confluence with this horizontal level around this point here which would be around almost 11 p.m midnight or midnight uh using uk time right here so yeah potential move down to here lower median line tag that and then what you'd look for ideally my signal would be getting a if we if that's how it plays out i'd look for a break above the upper median line for a potential entry opportunity yeah because what you want is the confirmation that we're not no longer in this downward trend and you only get that confirmation once you breach this downward trend which is marked out most likely it's going to be between the lower median line and upper median line in this case but if it comes down to the lower warning line then that means you would need it to break out the upper warning line on the upside in order to be be sure that we've broken out of this downward trend okay so that's the way i'm seeing things play out that kind of scenario that's what i'll be looking out for as such yeah that's just one potential way in which it could play out yeah but if it does i'm prepared for that scenario that's what we'll be looking out for at present so let's just get rid of that and yeah that pretty much summarizes i think 
everything I want to talk about except one other key level which is our invalidation point for this whole scenario so that move up to 35k I would be concerned about that playing out if we come down beneath this level this level at 29 and a half k let's zoom out on the four hourly now just to take a look let's get rid of that price tag and so yeah the reason I have this as invalidation is it means we would then be dropping beneath the low this upper median line here okay now that we've pushed firmly through it retested it it needs to stay above it otherwise there's a concern we drop back to the median line and maybe even lower okay so I certainly wouldn't want to hold on to a long position if we fell beneath this invalidation point right here so as long as we stay above that I think there's a very good shout that we push on as high as 35k for all the reasons I've mentioned there are also the very important Camarilla pivots which I've mentioned at length Previously, you can check out previous tweets that I've mentioned where I go, I've displayed them over the last few years, showing you why I think 35k is in a very important level uh, as a target based on the camera of pivots. So that pretty much rounds up everything that I'm looking out for at this, at this moment in time here on Bitcoin. So let's see how things play out. All right, guys, take care. Thank you for your attention and watching through to the end of this video. Now I know there's a lot of you watching that would like to learn how to confidently trade the financial markets independently and I also know how confusing this can be regardless of how many stressful hours that you put in. For that reason I've put together all of my trading knowledge in a complete course titled The Works. The Works consists of thorough and jargon free lessons broken down into a comprehensive curriculum providing you with a holistic understanding of the markets and giving you an accelerated journey to being able to analyze and trade the markets all by yourself. And for those of you that are looking for my weekly detailed video analysis on crypto and stocks, then there's Cryptology, which is a subscription that will also give you access to the works while subscribed. For more information on what's included in the works or Cryptology, you can head on over to wave618.com or alternatively use the links in the description to this video for a limited time 50% discount offer. So I hope to see you on the other side, but in the meantime, if you would like to sample some of my educational videos, then you can check out these videos that you can see on your screen right now. Thanks once again, and until next time, take care.